Hey guys, welcome back. So today I have a very exciting video. We have some new Wet n Wild products to test out for you guys. I have all of these new Pro Wet n Wild blush brushes. brushes. I have all of the new Wet n Wild brushes. I am so excited to try them out. These are like their Pro brush line, which is pretty fancy. Pretty sure I got every single one. They all look really amazing. I can't wait to touch them. They just came in. I ran upstairs. Took a quick little body shower, so my hair is a mess, and I wanted to film this for you guys. So I also do have the cushion foundations that we're going to test out today just to do a first impression on. You have concealer. I think this one's going to be too dark for my under eyes. So if that's the case, I actually have this CoverGirl one I figured I could try. And then we have some new eyeshadow palettes. Super exciting stuff from Wet n Wild. I can't wait to share it with you guys today. If you guys aren't subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And if you want to see how all these new Wet n Wild products work, and if they're good, let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so I've already primed my eyes. I'm like really antsy to dig into these products because I've been waiting on them forever. Like I ordered these, I believe, the day after Christmas and I just got them. I have this little eyeshadow palette that looks like a nice staple. It's called Hooked on Vinyl. This is the Color Icon Eyeshadow Quad. This is really pretty. Just kind of has your staple colors in there. And then these two are so pretty. This one does have a broken shade right here, but I'm not going to give it back because I don't feel like waiting on a new one. But this is the Not a Basic Peach Color Icon palette as well. And on the back it kind of tells you where you could put these different shades for different looks. Then I have another one of those palettes in rosé in the air, which just looks so pretty. Do you see these warm tone shades? But yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get started. I have a few of these Wet n Wild Pro blending brushes. I will put the list of prices down below in the description box for you guys if you're interested. We have this fluffy blending brush, and then we also have a tapered blending brush. We also have the Dome eyeshadow brush. So these are most of the eyeshadow brushes that I have. I have this other small one, but it's the Precision Flat Brush, like for your... <coughs> I have another smaller brush, but this is the Precision Flat Brush for your face. So I figured I would just use this for my face and just see how it works because it is super, it's like a flat top kabuki in a way. We will be incorporating these with any other um, brushes that we need. It doesn't feel super crazy good, but it feels okay. It feels like it'll work. It only has the numbers on here once you take that packaging off, so it's the P20 brush. So I just got both of them open and they don't, I thought when I first looked at these that they opened from the bottom, but they definitely open from the side. There is no mirror, it's just these ones right here. First thing I'm going to do is take the rosé in the air and I'm going to use this shade right here. And we are just going to, it's quite a bit of fallout, but that's okay, it's really affordable. And we're going to put this all over the lid. Color Icon shadows from Wet n Wild have always been really good, so I'm excited to use these. Brush seems like it's doing pretty well so far. I'm just gonna use this as my all over lid color. All right, took no time at all to do that. Going back into the rose one, it says transition, transition. I'm gonna go in with this one because it's very, very pretty. It's that MAC shade that they discontinued, but they're probably bringing back. I had it too. Everybody loved it. This That's what this one reminds me of. So I'm going to take this on the brush and I'm going to blend this into my crease. So we're just going to blend. And I'm adding just a little bit more, like a little bit lower in the crease. Just so it's nice and pigmented. And I'm going to lightly bring the brush up and fade out that line. I think that looks pretty good. Bringing it all the way in the inner corner as well. I'm just doing circular motions. Again, really building that color in the crease. And then I will bring it up to fade it towards the brow. I also think these brushes are really sleek and nice. They have a, is it rose gold? These are kind of like a rose gold. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not like a rose gold expert, but they look rose gold to me. They're really pretty and they have like a tapered end. So I love that because you can store them really easily sometimes if brushes have a thick end, they're like a pain in the butt to store, so I know that's a first world problem, but it happens, okay? Now what I want to do is I actually want to go into this Not A Basic Peach and take this really, hello, really warm tone shade right here. And I'm going to use this other brush, which is the Wet n Wild Tapered Blending Brush. So this one's just more tapered, not as like fluffy as the other one. Okay, so the number on here is P15. This is what it looks like. Again, taking that really pretty orange. Wow, do you see that? 
I'm gonna put this right and in the crease. I'm not going above that transition shade. I like this has a lot of bristles, but it's not too tightly packed. Like they're tight enough to wear they're a really great shape and they just fit right in the socket. I like this brush a lot. I will definitely be using this one. I will use this for majority of like cut creases, blending them out, putting specific colors into my crease. You have a lot of control, but it's still blending and that's what I love about it. I'm going back into the Rosé in the Air palette, yes. And I'm going to use this color and I'm going to bring this one right here in the outer V and blend it about halfway on. Look at that color. My gosh, that is so pretty for a drugstore eyeshadow, you guys. What in the world? That is so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna go back in with this fluffy brush and I'm actually gonna take the really intense orange that we used and use this to really focus this directly into that crease as well since this other brush that we have has most of that like magenta shade on it so I'm gonna take this and I'm going to lightly blend the edges of that color we just put on and again focusing it like right into the crease where we put that orange first I like that a lot okay last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this really deep matte right here and I'm just going to put this right here just steepen it up a bit nothing too crazy and then I, I am gonna go back into the shade real quick and just touch up that lid so this is what eyeshadow is looking like so far now I'm gonna go into the rosé in the air and I'm gonna use this shade right here and I'm just gonna use one of my own brushes because these two are pretty dirty and I don't have another eyeshadow brush to use with this product so I'm gonna use the 242 by Mac one of my favorite brushes again going into this shade right here or should I keep this all matte I don't know this shimmery color doesn't look too hot Well, that's a surprise. Doesn't look terrible. It's not as shimmery and like reflective as I prefer. Then again, taking this brush right here, going to very lightly blend the two together. Okay, so that is what the eyes look like right now. I definitely love the matte shades. I think the matte shades are really beautiful. The shimmer, so far, not necessarily my thing. Favorite. Now I'm going to use this Wet n Wild Skinny Eyeliner. It's really small. <laughs> it's the Mega Slim Skinny Tip Eyeliner in black. I do really like the Skinny Mascara, so we will see how I like this. Oh my god, it is so... Do you see how tiny that is? It's, that's big! Okay, so I'm going to go in. Well, it's really black. eyeliner is definitely for people who want a really thin line um, but you can create a thicker line with it it's very pigmented as you can see I just don't I feel like I don't like it because it's so short so it's kind of hard to just like flick your wing liner I do like that it's so small because it is so precise I wouldn't necessarily use this to create the full wing but if I wanted to give the wing like a nice little flick right at the end something really nice and pointy or get really close to the inner corner I would use this product I think it is really nice very pigmented Easy to work with, not terrible. We'll say my liner is not so even. So, uh, so I'm gonna fix that. So I just applied my lashes, lash glue still drying and all of that. I did prime my face. I use the Smashbox primer water and then the Soak and Soak and Glory and then the Soap and Glory one heck of a blot primer as well. We are moving on to new foundation. This is the Mega Cushion Foundation from My Wild SPF 15. It says it contains natural coconut derivative. It's a liquid foundation in a cushion compact, luminous, lightweight, and buildable hydrating formula. Have two shades here. I have new beige and buff beige, and we are gonna see. I think I'm gonna be more buff beige because I'm pretty self tan right now. So, the way this sponge feels on the back of it does something to me, and I don't like it. So there is a mirror in here, it has a little film on it. I'll just leave it there for now. And then it does have the cover protector, so we're just gonna open that up and I feel like this is gonna be my shade so we'll just go with it see how it works I'm gonna be honest with you I'm not using this product <sighs> something about it I am really weird about the way stuff feels like 
if it doesn't feel it like sometimes certain things can make my teeth hurt it's the weirdest thing I know even if my hands are really dry some things just really just don't work for me so I'm not gonna use that I'm gonna use my own sponge this is the real technique sponge and if I find I don't really like it then I'll go to their sponge and try it I'll just I'll just try okay so uh, I'm gonna dip my sponge in here get some product out looks like a really good color and we're just gonna apply this to the skin feels really good with this sponge and this foundation feels nice it smells good too it smells clean so I did use a mattifying primer this is pretty dang light for me I thought it was gonna be darker even on the packaging it looks pretty dark but it'll be all right well bronze but it has pretty good coverage so far I'm just gonna do one side of my face first and then I'm gonna show you guys before and after and then what I'm going to do is do the other side, kind of let this dry a little bit, and then go on top of it to see if we can build it up. So, this side's without, this side's with. I think it looks really good, minus the color being off. Nude beige is definitely lighter than this one, so I'm just going to stick with this. But I think it looks really good. It definitely is very luminous, which makes me nervous having oily skin. But we'll see how it looks when I set it and all that kind of stuff. We are very, very, very dewy. We look like the highlight that I put on my body right now. I'm going to see if I can build up on this cheek really quickly. I need to also get more on my nose. My nose is like one of the hardest places for me to get good coverage. Because I don't know why, but sometimes foundations just don't want to cover on my nose. I look like with the foundation right now that I've been sweating my life away. <laughs> I look like this wet highlight. Look at this. That is very shiny. Okay, so it's really not covering up my redness that well. I would, so I will say it's more of like a medium. Two full coverage, just depending on stuff that you have on your skin. It could be full coverage for you, depending on what you need to be covered. But I feel like the more you try to build it up, the less coverage you get. I wouldn't build it up. That's just me. Um, this is definitely off the bat not something I would use in the summertime because it is so dewy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some concealer on. I'm going to actually use this new concealer from CoverGirl because I really feel like that Wet n Wild one is just going to be way too dark. This one's in the shade Fair and it's a new one with vitamins E, B3, and B5. It has really nice packaging. I know this is a Wet n Wild video but it's all drugstore so. So we're just going to twist this sucker up. And we're just gonna, I'm gonna do one eye first. I just wanna see what it looks like. I low key love brush tip applicators. There's just something about them that makes it so easy to apply. Taking the other side of the sponge, just the one I did foundation with, I'm gonna do this side with the sponge. Did apply this concealer pretty far down to help conceal some of that redness. It's nice, like it's covering and it's really brightening, but I just need. A little bit more coverage especially because my redness is peeking through right here so I am gonna take Tarte Shape Tape in light medium honey and I'm just gonna put it like right here and blend that out okay so there we go we have more coverage now covering up that redness now I want to try the CoverGirl concealer with a brush I'm gonna use this precision con or foundation brush from Wet n Wild for concealer this is really cool. It has like a dip in it. Can you guys see that? There's like a little dip right in here. Very soft brush. These look really nice. Yeah, this is like pokey. It's poking my out. Yeah, I don't really like the CoverGirl concealer for me. That's another reason why I don't use cushion foundations a lot because I like full coverage. I like it to stay. And sometimes when you start blending things on top of the other, things just start moving and like the foundation's moving. This concealer is a mess. So I'm going to take Tarte Shape Tape and just do the other side as well. I'm actually going to take my Peach Perfect Powder from Too Faced, my Real Techniques sponge I'm using again. So I'm going to take this Precision Pro flat brush from Wet n Wild and I'm actually going to hit the inner corners real quick of my eyes um, where the concealer is. I think that's what this brush will be perfect for. Getting right in there. Next up I'm going in with this large powder brush from Wet n Wild. So far I'm really liking these brushes from Wet n Wild. Um, the foundation one's okay. I don't think it's going to be great. Maybe if, I don't know, I don't, I don't think this one's going to be ideal for me, but I will try it out one more time with a foundation instead of concealer. Like I said, this is a powder brush. It's like a tapered powder brush. And I'm just going to... Ooh, I like this. I like this brush. I like the shape of it. I even think it'd be really great for bronzer. 
All right, moving on, I am gonna bronze the skin. I'm actually going to, what one do I wanna use? I'm either gonna use the powder brush or this brush to bronze my skin. This one's the blush brush. It's a pretty big blush brush. Yeah, I think I'll use this one for blush. Okay, I'm gonna use this brush, again, the powder one for bronzer. I'm using the Neutrogena Healthy Skin. This grabs product. I'm just gonna bronze the cheeks, take it up to the forehead. I like this for bronzer. This is precise. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is take the Precision Setting Brush, and I'm gonna use this to contour. I'm gonna use this TJ Maxx Contour Palette. I'm gonna use my same color I've been using. Put on the brush. And contour. Ooh! This is a good powder, but this brush just really diffused that and blended it out. I love the way that contour looks right there. Like it's pretty dramatic, but that's why I love it. And now we're gonna go in with the blush brush and we're gonna use the Burt's Bees blush in the shade Bare Peach. I would almost use this one for foundation instead of blush. Again, you can use brushes for whatever you want. Okay, so that's good. I don't mind it for blush. It wouldn't be something I would wanna use with a super pigmented blush, like the Anastasia ones, because it would grab too much product, but it is really nice. And now I'm going back into this palette, and I'm going to use the setting brush, or I'm sorry, the tapered highlighting brush, which looks really, really nice. It's not like one of those flimsy ones with barely any bristles on it. This looks like a really good brush. And I'm going to dip into my highlight. Okay, it's all right, but it doesn't pick up as much product as I want it to, so you gotta keep going back into your highlight palette, but it's nice, it gets the job done. I will say I kinda like this brush better because it's not like a line. This brush, the Anastasia one, kinda diffuses it out. I might even use this for eyeshadow, just like all over lid colors. I won't be using this for highlight, but I will be using it for probably eyeshadow. I have two more brushes left, and I have this flat contour brush, which we did not use today, but I do wanna see. I didn't get a liner brush or something. I must not have gotten all the brushes if I didn't get like a liner eyebrow brush. Okay, so this is what the contour brush looks like. I think it's pretty standard contour brush. The Wet n Wild Pro brush they do have like finger indents which is nice I'm gonna just see what it looks like I'm not going anywhere so we'll just see how this works this is a pretty stiff product dang that's a pretty sharp contour I feel like it does apply a lot of product right when you press it down so you really got to work to blend it but I do think I prefer this one because it gives you a dramatic contour but it really blends it out nicely where it's not like super dark right here and then like right now it's looking really dark everywhere but that way it's not super dark here and not really blended up a little bit towards that cheekbone. I also have another brush that I'm quickly going to show to you guys. This is the Dome Pencil Eye Brush. I use these kind of brushes for underneath my eyes to blend out color. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Go into the Rosé in the Air Quad. Take that transition shade that I love so much, this one right here, with that pencil brush. And I'm going to blend that out. I think it works. I think it looks pretty good. It's doing its job. It's good. I think it worked. What do you guys think? I have a really smoky under eye right now. I need to put on some liner. I'm going to finish up my liner and my brows and my lips, and I will be back to wrap up this video for you guys. Okay, so my makeup is done. The lip that I have on is the Smashbox Liquid Lip in Out Loud. But anyway, so I'm going to quickly tell you guys what I think about everything. Um, so far, I think this is an okay foundation. I mean, right now my skin does look pretty dang good, I have to say. Let me look at this 
up close again because I was looking at my face up close when I was doing my eyeliner, like fixing it, and my pores looked really good. Yeah, like my skin texture looks really good. I don't know. I'm going to continue to try it out and let you guys know what I think. I'm not 100% yet, and I also want to see how it wears, and the colors are too light, so I need to like not be as self-tan next time. And then I do like the mattes in these palettes. I think they are great. The shimmer shades, not so much so far, um, but I do really like the matte colors. I will continue to use these products. I do really like the skinny liner, especially when I was cleaning up my liner, I really liked using this because it was super precise and just cleaned up that line so well. And I like it because the felt tip is so small for that reason. Like I didn't like it in the beginning at first because the felt tip was so small, but now I really like it because when a felt tip is longer and you're trying just to cover up your lash glue, sometimes that longer felt tip can kind of go everywhere and then you have to continue to make your line bigger and bigger. This did not do that. It was super precise and I'm definitely going to continue to use this product. I think it is great. And I did not like the CoverGirl concealer. I know this wasn't about them. But they were in here, so it's about them. And I didn't really like this concealer at all. I just, it's not my favorite. It's hard for me to find new concealers that I'm obsessed with. And then for the most part, all the brushes I really did enjoy, especially the eyeshadow brushes. I'm going to purchase more of those. Love these face brushes. I think these are awesome for drugstore brushes. I really like these so far. I really do like the face brushes. And I'm still kind of on the fence about this one for foundation. I will try this out with a foundation and let you guys know what I think. Everything else I really did like. So that is my like first impressions on the new Wet n Wild products that I received today. I did purchase them, but I wanted to do a full video for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next one.